Hello, and thanks for your interest in my course, GeoServer from A to Z. This course is designed for geospatial professionals who are interested in learning how to use GeoServer to publish their GIS data to the web so that other people may view it, or possibly even edit it. GeoServer is open source software, which means that you don't have to pay for a license, although there may be other costs involved like web hosting and development, but the software itself is free to use. This is a dense topic, and I feel like I barely touched the surface in this 9-hour course. I see other courses that claim they can teach you GeoServer in 2.5 hours, and quite frankly, I don't believe that you can learn enough about GeoServer to be able to implement your own project in 2 hours. So please keep that in mind as you evaluate the relative value between this course and others that are available. In this course, I'm going to start with an overview of GeoServer. What is it? Who needs it? And you might be surprised to find out that the answer is not everyone, maybe not you. And what are required as inputs and what will the outputs look like? And then we're going to install GeoServer on our local computer running as localhost. And this is a great way to explore GeoServer, see it in action and get familiar with the interface and the sample data, etc. This is also about where most courses end, but in this course we're just getting started. Now that we have a better understanding of the basics, we'll dive a little bit deeper into the weeds and see how GeoServer really works, listening for HTTP requests and responding with data in standard OGC formats like WMS and WFS. And the fact that the response is in standard formats is important because that means that the data can be used in a whole variety of different clients. And although working on localhost is useful as a learning tool and as a development platform, the whole point of GeoServer is to make your data available to the world. So I'm going to show you one option for starting that quickly and affordably using a GeoServer hosting service in the cloud that will cost only about $25 a month. And this is a crucial step that most courses leave you on your own for. But I'm going to show you how to do it. But before you do, you won't have to spend anything because you'll be able to load your own data onto my cloud service and evaluate it for performance with your own data so you can see if it works for you before paying for your own service in the cloud. And we'll go through the entire process of taking a project from QGIS and publishing it in the cloud. We'll set up a workspace and define our data stores, load our data into a PostGIS database in the cloud, and use those as the basis for our GeoServer layers, which is really cool because it means that the data you're getting from GeoServer is going to be live. And you can have other people accessing that PostGIS data from a variety of different clients, and GeoServer will always have the most accurate data, even when it's changing quickly. And then we'll copy the exact symbology from our QGIS project, so our GeoServer layers look the same as they did in our desktop software. We'll create some user accounts with specific privileges to control who has access to the data and exactly what they can do with it. Because while the point of GeoServer is to share your geospatial data with the world, there are many times when you may not want to share everything with everybody. We'll also see how you can access your GeoServer layers to view and even edit the data remotely using clients such as QGIS and ArcGIS and even Google Earth. And we'll spend a fair bit of time discussing the filtering capabilities of GeoServer using SQL views and simple CQL filters. So you can choose exactly what subsets of your data you want to see and even do some fairly complex analysis with spatial filters. For example, you can ask the question, how many active raptor nests are within 500 meters of a pipeline in Weld County? And just as importantly, you can provide your clients with the ability to ask those same kinds of questions and vary some of the conditions. Finally, I'll provide a brief introduction to web mapping with the Leaflet JavaScript Mapping API, focusing on displaying data from GeoServer in a web mapping application. I'll even show you how you can generate a web map from a QGIS project with no programming required at all, and load it to a web server so that others can see it from anywhere in the world. Now that's a lot of information right there, which will get you some practical experience and the ability to start using GeoServer with your data right away and create some powerful geospatial web applications. 
but really it's just touching the surface of what you can do with GeoServer. My goal with this course and in all my courses is to teach you the 20% of the material that will allow you to do 80% of your work. Now you may find that the material in this course will allow you to do 100% of your work and that would be great. But if not, then my goal is to get you to the point where you understand enough about GeoServer that you'll be able to use the documentation to figure out the remaining bit that you may need for your specific application. So thanks again for your interest in this course, and as always, happy mapping.